We can find no written evidence that anybody by the name of Emily ever existed in Stowe uh, at around that time. There's no birth certificates, no death notices, no burial certificates. Uh, the only possible proof we have is if you go into the cemetery in the village, right behind the memorial building, the one we call the Old Yard Cemetery, the very first stone you see as you step in on the right-hand side is dedicated to our little Emmeline, and we like to think that that's our Emily. Legend has it that a young girl by the name of Emily, on or about the time of her wedding, was killed in this bridge. Some people say that she was killed when the rig she was riding in overturned as it was coming into the bridge and she was thrown free and, and died there. Others say that she was jilted by her boyfriend as they were due to meet and elope from the, the bridge as a central location for meeting and uh, he failed to show up and so she committed suicide there in the bridge. Some people say by hanging, uh, which we find very hard to believe because no young lady would have carried lengths of rope with her if she had been due to elope with her boyfriend. Um, others say that she jumped from the bridge uh, to her death. There have been several sightings of Emily's spirit here in the bridge. Uh, many, many more than I can possibly go on to here, but things like flashing lights, uh, like a strobe light going off, but not being created by a flashlight or a strobe light, just a, and it didn't light up the whole inside of the, of the bridge. It lit up just a little tiny spot on the wall, about the size of a silver dollar. Uh, voices when you know there's no one else around, breezes on perfectly still days. I've heard reports of people's hats being blown off when they walk through the bridge and there was no breeze. Uh, cold spots, if you go into the bridge and stand in a couple certain spots, you'll, you'll feel a, a, just a draft of cold air or you feel like you're stepping into a refrigerator. Uh, I've had several sightings where I've seen little balls of light that look almost like a person's face. Um, many photographs that have been taken of the bridge uh, will have blurry spots in them. We've had wedding photographs where uh, the bride and groom are blurred, uh, other photographs that people didn't even know what the story of the bridge was. They had just happened onto it in a trip and they took some pictures of the bridge and when they finished and got them developed, there was a blurred uh, image standing in one side of the bridge. Uh, one family from Canada that has written to me uh, had been here to Stowe visiting and taken some photos of the bridge and as they were showing them to their neighbors at home who had an autistic son and he was watching them with them and when the picture of the bridge came up on the screen, he pointed to the bridge and said, woman, die, and just absolutely took back everybody that was listening because he very seldom spoke 
and he did not know the story, but for him to look at this bridge and see this in a slide, um, it just uh, sent chills up and down their spines, and she said they just could not believe that this actually happened. Another uh, problem that has cropped up there at the bridge that we attribute to Emily is the uh, electrical equipment that often doesn't work in the bridge from tape recorders that will record up to the edge of the bridge, but the minute you step in, all they pick up is static. Uh, cameras not being able, video cameras especially, not working in the camera, uh, in the bridge as such. Uh, I was doing a show up there one time, a documentary, and we were miked, and as we walked into the bridge, everything was working fine. The equipment all said that it was still picking up our voices, but when they played the tape back later that day, they found out that none of the voices came out once we were in the bridge until we stepped out of the other side. Um, it's many, many electrical items just do not work. We had generator problems one night, uh, light problems up there, the same show. I went over to a section of the bridge uh, away from everybody and I just said, Emily, now we're only here to do this work and we're going to be going as soon as it's over. It's going to be on national television and a little bit of this and that. All of a sudden the generator started, the cameras worked, the lights worked, everything was fine. Uh, I quite often go up to the bridge and if I have done an interview there or we have, I felt we have disturbed Emily, I will take some flowers or a little piece of candy or a shiny coin or something, usually a penny or something, and I'll just place it up into the rafters around the top of the bridge. Never in the same place, over and over again, it's usually a different spot each time. And every time I go back to check on it, sometimes three days later, sometimes a couple weeks later, Emily has picked it up and taken it. Uh, most always, everything has been taken. The flowers no longer there and dead. Uh, the coin is missing. And I don't think there's anybody in the neighborhood or anybody around that's going to climb up and look for a penny uh, tucked up in the rafters of this bridge. Many people have said that their cars, when they were driving through the bridge, were scratched. Uh, people have said they've heard of cows and horses that went through the bridge that got scratched or marked in some way or another. I have seen no proof of this myself. If someone had been through that bridge and something strange had scratched that car, it would be the showplace of this county. I mean, everybody would be to see it, and I have not heard of any of it being proved. Uh, Emily is not at all violent. She's one of the most benign spirits that could be. Uh, she shows up as a flashing light, as a breeze, as a cold spot. I mean, uh, how violent can a breeze be if it's just a breeze? If it's a hurricane, that's a different story, but she's never, never been very uh, anything but gentle. <laughs>